gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the Word of the Day podcast. My name is Jamie Silva. I am your host, and it is my honor and privilege to be back here behind the mic once again, pleasantly explaining another useful word to you all. Today's word is the adjective desultory, which I would say means aimless, directionless, or lacking purpose. So if I go to the mall and spend a couple hours walking from store to store, not buying anything or even really intending to buy anything. And all I do is just pick up things and put them back down, look at this, glance at that. This might be described as a desultory stroll through the mall. Like, I apparently didn't go there with a clear goal in mind. I didn't visit the stores in a particular order. I was just sort of there, wandering this way and that. The online definition is very much on the mark. It goes, quote, lacking a plan, purpose, or enthusiasm. Now, the enthusiasm element is new, I hadn't thought of that, but I like it, it makes sense. Like, if you don't have any sort of goal in whatever you're doing, odds are you're not super enthused about it either. This stands in contrast to a related, though somewhat narrower and certainly more obscure word that a couple folks have suggested I feature on the show, probably because it sounds so fun and quirky. This being the verb kadawample, which means, quote, to travel in a purposeful manner towards a vague destination. So here, as with desultory, there's not a clear ultimate goal in view. But unlike with desultory, that's no problem. Because you're traveling with purpose, and probably enthusiasm as well. Because it's about the journey, not the destination. All that sort of thing. Whereas desultory has more of a ho-hum, whatever, I guess I may as well sensibility to it. Now, there's also a second online definition of desultory. It goes, quote, of conversation or speech going constantly from one subject to another in a half-hearted way, unfocused, unquote. And indeed, desultory does frequently refer to conversation, specifically aimless, unimportant, very blah conversations. And come to think of it, the phrase blah conversations is quite fitting, I would say, because the adjective blah can also represent pointless, predictable, or tedious speech, as in this example. As far as the students were concerned, Professor Chapman's lecture on the agricultural practices of ancient Mesopotamia was just a bunch of blah, blah, blah. By extension, then, blah conversations could be said to be desultory. To give you a sense of what these conversations sound like, I'd like to bring in a special guest who's making her second appearance on the show, and this would be Sarah. Sarah, welcome back. Hi, it's great to be back. Hey, it's great to have you back. Now, Sarah, you and I will now demonstrate for the listeners what a desultory conversation sounds like. And the variety that we're going to do is the kind people often exchange when they have a short encounter with a passing acquaintance. Ready? Ready. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> hey, uh, Sarah, right? A long time no see. How you been? Oh, hey, Jamie. Yeah, long time no see. I've been good. Yeah, busy but good. Yeah, yeah, same here. Just trying to keep my head above water. You know how it is. Definitely. Yeah. So, um, still working in the city? Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm still doing that. Cool. You, uh, you liking it? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I am. Yeah, it's good. It's going good. And, um, for you, remind me, you've still got that, um, that web design gig going. How's that working out for you? Oh, can't complain. Except for the commute, I guess. Traffic's just gotten crazy, you know? Yeah, it really has. All that construction isn't helping, that's for sure. I know, it's never-ending. Constant building. Right, but at least my work has started letting me work from home a couple days of the week. Oh, yeah, I hear uh, I hear more places are doing that. That's cool. I kind of wish mine would. Oh, yeah, it's been a nice change. Totally. Okay, well, I actually, I should probably... Yeah, yeah me too. I, yeah, I should... of course. Right. Well, good running into you. Yeah, catch you later. Bye. Bye. And scene. Okay, for any listeners that stuck around through that boring and unoriginal conversation, that was pretty desultory, I think. Sarah and I wandered around aimlessly from topic to topic, not delving far at all into any of them, and saying just the usual basic things that most anyone would say about those subjects. How dull, right? Yeah, I almost fell asleep partway through. Exactly. Now, folks, if you think back to our episode on pleasantries, which is basically small talk, you could think of this as medium talk. 
It's beyond mere greetings and exchanging best wishes and good vibes, which is the stuff of pleasantries. In desultory chats, you do discuss actual subjects, but again, you don't get into them in any level of detail, and you probably move from one to another pretty quickly, without much direction or enthusiasm. Here's another example of desultory conversation, this taken from the satirical comedy show Portlandia in a sketch called Small Talk Convention. In it, we see a speaker addressing a seated crowd from a podium. Let's listen. Thank you so much, and welcome to the third annual National Small Talk Convention. How are you? How are you? Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Three years, I can't believe it's been that long. Back then, the weather was not as warm as it is today. It's a little warmer, kind of warm. A lot of construction going up. It's true. I'd like to bring up one of the founding members of the Small Talk organization, Miss Erica Kern. Thank you. Thank you so much. Got my hair cut the other day. Um, yeah, I went to a, a new guy, and uh, yeah, he recommended a, a new conditioner, which I, I think, yeah, it's. It, I think it is working better. We have some great events coming up. Um, pointing at someone else's kid and saying, aw. Oh, tomorrow morning, uh, just nice. Nice. Okay, I don't know about you, but I find this dryly hilarious. And to be clear, again, I think they're doing something closer to medium talk there, not pure small talk, but it's close enough. And also, medium talk is sort of my own made-up word slash, I hope, useful distinction, so whatever. Now, it's easy to mock or complain about blah, desultory conversations, and it's true that they're not all that thrilling, and if that's the only kind of conversation someone is capable of, they're probably not the most fascinating person to talk to. But I don't want to come down on them too hard, because they actually play a key role in tons of social interactions. See, there are many people and many situations where you're not looking to have a deep, meaningful, or purposeful conversation. It's just not what you're there for. You're just passing the time, let's say, or exchanging some banal and friendly remarks before getting down to business. Or you have no choice but to talk to this person, and you're trying to make the best of it. In these settings, desultory conversations are your friend. They allow you to chat with someone briefly about a slew of random and not super important topics, but without divulging anything very personal about yourself, which you might not want to do. And since you only touch on each subject superficially, you don't have to know much about any of them, and nothing prevents you from saying, well, actually gotta go, whenever you want, without it seeming like a big disruption. All these things are very important and very useful, so you want to have these conversation options and skills. Now, while desultory conversations are perfect for strangers or passing acquaintances, Ironically, I think the other setting or the other group of people who it's most normal and acceptable to have lots of desultory conversations with is, in fact, very close friends and family, particularly if you spend a lot of time around them. For these folks, who you already know super well and are totally at ease around them, you probably don't feel the need to have deep discussions or share profoundly personal stories, hopes, dreams, etc. every time you're together, which, again, may be quite often. These deeper topics might arise organically, and that's fine, but also, if you pass an afternoon together just pottering around, doing your thing, occasionally exchanging a few words on whatever strikes your fancy, that can be perfectly nice too. In fact, I've heard it said that this is a natural place for married couples to arrive after years or certainly decades together. At that point, you know, you've heard all each other's jokes and stories. You know all each other's opinions, quirks, and preferences. And given how much time you're around each other, there just isn't enough scintillating conversation material to fill it all. So you probably spend most of your time chatting about things of not much significance or nothing at all, and are just content to be around each other. Seems pretty pleasant, if you ask me. Now, I want to zoom out from this focus on desultory conversations and talk about the other things desultory can refer to. A rule of thumb here, I think, is that the bigger subject you apply it to, the sadder or more prejudicial it is. So, for example, a desultory stroll through a botanical garden sounds great, pretty peaceful. But if you described, like, a college student as 
approaching her education in a desultory fashion, or approaching it desultorily, which is also a word, the adverb form, uh, that would be pretty pejorative, right? It implies that the student is not very serious about figuring out a major or what she wants to do, and instead just attends whatever classes strike her fancy, if she's attending classes at all, rather than just hanging out on the quad with her friends. Or take another scenario. What about someone who moves through their career desultorily, not really sure what they want to do, hopping from job to job without a clear idea of how to progress, lacking the motivation or wherewithal to strive for success or pursue their dreams? Now, this may not be the person's fault, or what they want even, but at least by our modern standards of what constitutes a rewarding, fulfilling professional journey, it's rather too bad. Or what about the classic relationship situation where one person, stereotypically the guy, is content to just be dating the girl for a long time, seemingly forever. And the girl is like, uh, when are you going to propose? And what are we even doing if we're not moving towards engagement? The girl in this situation could accurately describe her boyfriend's approach to the relationship as desultory and urge him to show some commitment. And I've got one last scenario where we try to continue the trend and take desultory as broad and therefore as sad as possible. So you know how people since the proverbial dawn of history have always been searching for meaning and purpose in their lives, asking things like, what's the point of it all? Why are we here? This shows that one of humanity's greatest fears is leading a pointless, aimless, aka desultory existence. Nobody wants this, and you know how depressing. This sort of reminds me of a possibly apocryphal, maximally sad epitaph, which uh, epitaphs are those brief phrases on tombstones commemorating the deceased. So this epitaph went, here lies so-and-so. He went through the motions, and he didn't enjoy it. Ouch, right? I would elaborate on this idea further, but half of the loyal Word of the Day staff is already crying, so I should probably stop. I did warn that desultory gets to be a real downer when you apply it to bigger concepts. You know what? Let's lighten the mood a bit uh, by getting into the examples of how desultory might appear in ordinary conversation or writing. Example number one. Franz's trips through the grocery store were typically quite desultory as he would wander the aisles idly selecting whatever food seemed tasty to him at the moment, with no shopping list in hand or any particular menus or meals in mind. Example number two. During Edwin's wisdom teeth extraction, he was surprised and somewhat perturbed when the attending orthodontist and his assistant, instead of exchanging terse instructions and observations about the oral surgery underway, had a pleasant, desultory little conversation about a variety of general interest topics, like favorite movies and weekend plans. Edwin could only hope that they wouldn't get too distracted and make some critical orthodontic errors. Example number three comes from The Illustrious Prince by E. Phillips Oppenheim. Quote, Mr. Coulson was not a man whose acquaintance it was difficult to make. From five to seven every afternoon, scorning the attractions of the band outside and the generally festive air which pervaded the great tea rooms, he sat at the corner of the bar upon an article of furniture which resembled more than anything else an office stool, dividing his attention between desultory conversation with any other gentleman who might be indulging in a drink and watching the billiards in which some of his compatriots were usually competing. Unquote. And finally, example number four comes from Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. The character in this scene is an affluent young gentleman of leisure who decides to try to write an opera. Quote, Laurie got on swimmingly for a time, but gradually the work lost its charm, and he forgot to compose while he sat musing, pen in hand. Or he roamed about the gay city to get some new ideas and refresh his mind, which seemed to be in a somewhat unsettled state that winter. He did not do much, but he thought a great deal, and was conscious of a change of some sort going on in spite of himself. It's genius simmering, perhaps. I'll let it simmer and see what comes of it, he said, with a secret suspicion all the while that it wasn't genius, but instead something far more common. Whatever it was, it simmered to some purpose, for he grew more and more discontented with his desultory life and began to long for some real and earnest work to go at, soul and body, and finally came to the wise conclusion that not everyone who loves music is a composer. Unquote. Interesting there that Laurie's life may have been desultory, but whatever was simmering was the opposite of desultory. It had the purpose and aim of revealing to him that, indeed, his life was desultory. Very paradoxical. And now, as we wind down this episode, I have a show announcement to make. 
that this will, in fact, be the final episode of the program, and I do not plan on making any more. There are a few reasons for this, but two stand out. For the first few years of the show, and going well back before that, actually, a surprising amount of my day-to-day thoughts and idle moments were about language and cool words and how to use them. And so, when I sat down to write an episode, the content usually just came flowing out in a way that would have made Laurie jealous, I'm sure. It wasn't super hard, and it certainly didn't feel laborious or arduous. But over the last couple of years, to quote what we just read, I've been conscious of a change of some sort going on in spite of myself. Meaning, I'd find myself just musing about words less often, and storing up fewer linguistic ideas, which meant that when I'd sit down to write and work on an episode, it felt more and more like work. And this was a big red flag, because this podcast fundamentally is a hobby, an unpaid and quite time-consuming leisure activity. You could say it was a commercially desultory venture, because I never had any professional or money-making aspirations with it. I mean, I remain the only person ever to purchase any merchandise from the fabulous War of the Day online store. The show wasn't totally without purpose, though, far from it. I'd say the purpose was to, first and foremost, amuse myself and any friends or family who listened, Um, also to have a chance to work on something creative with the many folks who appeared as talented voice actors on the show, and third, just to act as a little creative outlet for whatever quirky ideas ran through my head, mostly about words, but, but not always. And in all these respects, the show was outrageously successful. But the ultimate bar that this show had to meet was being fun and interesting enough for me to justify the considerable amount of time required to maintain it. And I'm afraid it's not meeting that bar anymore. And the voice you heard earlier in this episode is another key reason why I'm ending it. You see, talented voice actor Sarah and I actually got married in April of this year. And now, you know, when we're done with work at the end of the day, I'm not going to be like, well, sorry, sweetie, I'd love to hang out, but... I've got to spend the whole evening writing about useful words for the third night this week. So if you wouldn't mind just bringing me some dinner at some point, uh, that would be great. I mean, this does not sound like the pathway to marital bliss at all. And to be honest, I'd always thought of the show as more of a bachelor activity that would not continue if or when I entered the married state. So not a huge surprise. That said, I realize this is a bit sad, definitely for me, maybe for you. Uh, But hey, the show had a great run, we pleasantly explained a ton of useful words, and had a ton of fun along the way with all our talented voice actor guests. I want to thank all of them, plus the entire Word of the Day staff, especially producer Pete, and of course, all you listeners, especially those who wrote to us over the years. This podcast has been really special to me. It's going to be a great memory, and who knows, maybe when I retire in a few decades, I'll resurrect it, and you can all tune in again. In the meantime, until next time, if there ever is a next time, which I doubt, please do, as always, have a great. Yeah. Are you done recording? Yes. Yeah. Just wrapping up. Uh, what's up? Oh, nothing. I I just wondered if you had any plans for dinner. No, uh, nothing in particular. Uh, Do you have something in mind? Not really. I mean, anything's fine. Okay. Well, let's just uh, scrounge around. We'll see what we've got. Sure. Sounds good. Oh, and by the way, um, did you happen to get the mail today? Yep. It's over on the counter. Nice. Uh, thank you. Yeah. I just I hadn't picked it up in a few days, so I appreciate you grabbing it. Hey, speaking of grabbing things, did you see the Carsons asked if we wanted to grab some brunch next Saturday? You want to go? The Carsons? Yeah, they're fun. Let's do it. Okay, sure. I'll let them know. Hey, why is the mic still on? Are you still recording? Yeah. Sorry, I just, I had to get some authentic, desultory married couple conversation. Oh, okay, well, that's fine. But I hope you're not making other recordings of me for the show. Oh, of course not. Good, because if so, we would have a very non-desultory conversation about privacy and boundaries. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's just this one time for the listeners. Oh, well, if it's for the listeners, by all means, anything they need from me, you just let me know. Oh, that's not that's not what I meant. <laughs>